Make a paper boat in 30 seconds. Ready? Go. <laughs> you think I'm not gonna copy you because I don't know how to make a paper boat. Okay. 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 Uh-huh. And then. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. And then we're gonna tuck these little Three, bad boys in. Two, one, oh. and time's up. Okay. There we go. There we go. Boom. Blow a hat! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's go! Now it's time to race our pooper boats. First to the other side wins. How are you? How? How? Mine's not go, even go, go! 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 This is insane! Mine's not going anymore! No! 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 Yes! Yes! And... Woo! I think we got it. Let's go. Congrats. Why hello there. Welcome to Scripture Snacks with your boy Grant, where I give you a yummy snack of scripture while I snack on something yummy. Today's scripture snack is from the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 in the Bible. Time to snack. So do not be afraid, I am with you. Do not be terrified, I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. I will hold you safe in my hands. I always do what is right. Mm. Now that's delicious. You know what else is delicious? Cucumbers. The story before the story. The Bible is 66 books that tell the story of God's love for us. Here's a quick recap of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. In the beginning, God created everything, the heavens and the earth. But the best part of his creation were Adam and Eve, people. But they brought sin into the world by eating fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, disobeying God. Now sin is bad, but God is good. And so God chose Abraham and Abraham's family, promising that he would send a rescuer through them to fix the sin problem. Now when famine hit, Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph, brought the rest of the Israelite family into Egypt where they lived for many years. And that is where the book of Genesis ends. Time passed and a new Pharaoh rose to power who did not know Joseph or remember how God had delivered them from famine and certain death. Instead, he felt threatened by the people of Israel who were now growing in numbers and strength. Out of fear and evil in his heart, this new king forced the people of Israel into slavery and did everything he could to stop them from becoming a mighty people. Yet another Pharaoh attempted to destroy the people of Israel by demanding that every son born to the Hebrews be killed. Throw them into the Nile River, he commanded. He would rather murder them than watch them continue to live in the goodness and blessings of God. Little did this king know that he sought to destroy a nation of people God had promised would be great. God was preparing his people for one of the greatest deliverance stories of all time. During the time of Pharaoh's evil order, a Hebrew woman gave birth to a baby boy. She named him Moses. Seeing that he was no ordinary child, and his life was already marked with God's favor and mercy, Moses' mother hid him from Pharaoh's men as long as she could. When she could no longer keep him hidden, she devised a hopeful plan. 
She built a strong basket and coated it with tar and pitch so that it would float like a tiny little boat. She then placed baby Moses inside, took him down to the Nile River, and hid him in the tall grass along the water's edge. As she watched him drift down the river toward an unknown future, tears filled her eyes. She was sad to let him go, but her hope was in God. Moses' sister Miriam ran along the riverbank, watching the basket as it swiftly drifted downstream. She anxiously looked ahead, hoping for a miracle to save her little brother's life. The basket soon broke away from the bulrushes and plants, and came into view of an Egyptian princess and her maidens who were bathing in the river. When the princess noticed the curious basket floating in the water, she sent one of her maidens to fetch it. What a surprise to see such a beautiful child looking up at her. His cries melted her heart. Immediately she recognized it was a Hebrew baby boy. I will raise him as my own, she said, as she held on to the child protectively. So Moses began a life of privilege and pleasure among the royals in Egypt. But one day he would give it all up to gain a treasure that only God could give. Moses was a very young child when he was taken from the care of his mother to live in the royal courts of Egypt. Although raised a prince, he would never forget the family to which he was born. Moses was a Hebrew, the special people of God's promises. The faith of the Hebrews remained in Moses' heart even as he grew up surrounded with all the power, riches, and pleasures that Egypt had to offer. Forty years passed, and Moses grew from a boy into a man. But even though he was raised in the Egyptian way of trusting riches, horses, and chariots, God continued to draw Moses' thoughts away from Egypt and toward his fellow Hebrews. One day, he went out to see his people who were forced to work as slaves. The things he saw were terrible, including an Egyptian taskmaster beating a Hebrew slave. When Moses saw this, it broke his heart and filled him with anger. It was as if this man were attacking his own brother. Moses waited until he thought no one was watching. Then he charged toward the Egyptian, killed him, and buried his body in the sand. But as Moses would soon find out, someone had seen him, and word of his crime spread quickly. The next day, Moses went out to his people again, but this time he saw two Hebrews fighting with each other. In disbelief, he confronted them. Men, you are brothers. Why do you hurt each other in this way? One of them replied, who made you a ruler and judge over us? Are you going to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian? Moses was terrified. Everyone knew his awful secret. Meanwhile, Pharaoh was furious when he heard what Moses had done. By defending a Hebrew slave over an Egyptian taskmaster, Moses had rebelled against Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh ordered that Moses be captured and killed immediately. But Moses had already fled far away into the wilderness. Moses left Egypt behind. But this was just the beginning of his story. Moses ran for his life until he came to a place called Midian, where he rested at a community well. Seven women arrived at the well to get water, but they were driven away by a band of rival shepherds. Moses sprang into action to defend the sisters, he quickly defeated the shepherds, then helped the girls water their flock of sheep. When Jethro, the girl's father, heard about what Moses had done, he insisted that Moses be brought home and given a hero's welcome. Over the next 40 years, Moses would find a new home in the land of Midian and in the household of Jethro. In time, Jethro gave one of his daughters to Moses as a bride and Moses started a family. As the years passed, Moses would learn humility and the strength of a good shepherd. When the time was just right, God would call upon Moses 
to lead one of the greatest deliverance stories ever. The story of Moses' early years are filled with danger. A murderous pharaoh, a basket ride through the Nile River, with man-crushing crocs and humongous hippos. But through it all, God was with him and protected him. Did you know that the same God who kept Moses safe is alive and with you today? That's why God says over a hundred times in the Bible, do not be afraid. Here is just one of those times. So do not be afraid, I am with you. Do not be terrified, I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. I will hold you safe in my hands. I always do what is right. Don't be afraid. Not because you've got nothing to be scared of, but because you have a big, strong, good God who is with you. The same God who kept Moses safe is with you in everything you do. What are you afraid of? Maybe it's the dark or being alone, new classes, fitting with friends, being bullied, maybe not being good enough or failing. Those are really scary things, but God is so much bigger than them. So when you feel scared, remember, God is with you. Here are some ways to help remember that God is with you when you feel scared. Pray it. Every time you feel scared, just say a prayer to God, asking Him to be with you and to give you courage and strength. Read it. Read the story of Moses from the book of Exodus, chapters one through two, and talk to God about your favorite part of the story. You can find a link to that story in the description. Journal it. Write a letter telling God about the times that you feel afraid, and then write out the verse from Isaiah 41.10. You can find a link to that verse in the description. Draw it. Draw a picture of baby Moses in the basket, maybe floating down the river, in the water surrounding the basket. Write down different things that scare you. And in case you forget any of them, you can go ahead and find all of those activities in the description. And I'm gonna be praying that God gives you courage this week. Bye.